Here's the deal. Every single day, you take your credit or debit card and you swipe it all over town. Do you really feel comfortable giving all your information to Target? Best Buy? Or even Shields? What if there was a way to pay without transferring any sensitive data? Well, there is, and it's called tokenization. What is tokenization? Tokenization, at its most basic level, is replacing data with a surrogate or temporary value. By replacing data with a surrogate value, a user is ensuring that any hackers or thieves who might get a hold of the information are unable to use it for any real purpose. Creating a surrogate value is really as easy as coming up with a random string of numbers that can be matched back to the original string using a database. For example, with this credit card here, you can create a surrogate value that has absolutely no relation to the original card number, and then it can be matched back to that original card at a later time. So, what would a use case be for tokenization? Well, you see, when you swipe your credit card at a terminal at your favorite merchant, you're transferring valuable data over to that merchant and entrusting them with your PAN, also known as your primary account number, or just the number that shows up on your card your full name, your address, and even the expiration date on your card. So I get it. You get it. Tokenization is a more secure method. You don't need to give the merchant your real card number or any of your information. All you need to give them is this fake value. But you're still wondering, how does this even work? Well, with the emergence of new mobile payment solutions, such as Apple's Apple Pay and Android's Android Pay, tokenization has never been easier. Tokenization is not by any means an easy system to implement, but these big players in the market have been able to come in make agreements with the banks and implement tokenization across the market and make it available to everyone. to everyone. So it all makes sense in theory. I should be able to go to my favorite merchant and I should be able to pay using tokenization. I should be able to have that peace of mind that I'm not handing over my credit card number. But how does that work? I can't just hand them a random number and expect my bank account to be charged. Well, it's a complex process with a lot of different parts involved, but I think we can understand it. The first piece is that the merchant you're going to, it must support mobile payments. Usually this is depicted by three little lines on top of the terminal and maybe a logo for Apple Pay or Android Pay. So I go to the merchant and I pull out my phone. I've got Android Pay on my phone and I'm looking to pay. Well, the first thing that happens is my Android phone communicates with Google, or if it would be Apple if you're using Apple Pay, and it gives Google my PAN or my personal account number. Next, Google communicates with my bank as they have a good relationship and asks my bank, could you please give me a token so that Brendan can use this at a merchant? The bank agrees and gives Google the token. Google, in turn, gives it to my phone, who will give it to the merchant using NFC or near field communication. The merchant checks with the acquirer. The acquirer is MasterCard Visa, it's your card holder. The acquirer, with a good relation with your bank, 
checks the token with the bank. The bank will look in its secure vault. This vault holds all the tokens and matches them up with the real PAN or the personal account number. If there's a match, the bank lets the acquirer know, and the acquirer lets the terminal know. The terminal in turn finally lets your phone know. You'll get a verification that the payment has gone through. At this point, your bank is free to charge your account and the merchant never saw your card number. So that's it. That's tokenization. But come on, let's see it in action. I'm gonna go on a quest and see where I can use tokenization and if it works. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah.